Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. As I did mention last year, not only are we going to be doing a monthly wrap-up of everything that I watch, but we're also going to be doing monthly wrap-ups on all the board games that I played both physically and on BGA. I am mainly just a movie related channel but I am starting to kind of like dip my toes into a year pool. I do want to pre-warn you because I know like when it comes to like board games it is like a family friendly um, environment. I am a fan of the cursey words so if that is a problem for you I may not be the channel for you. Um, I do try to kind of like minimize it here because I do know it's family friendly but you know sometimes they just kind of slip out um, so I apologize for that if that offends you. In the month of January I played looks like 16 different games um, a total of 23 times. Um, so in no particular order um, just starting at the top here on this list uh we're gonna have marvel champions the card game and this is a really cool game you're playing one of the marvel heroes and you're trying to stop certain schemes from happening um the starter box comes with i believe it's like six different heroes and three villains and of course they come out with like booster packs of different heroes like every so often like so so many of them and then there's like different expansions which i don't have any i only have the base one your cards have of course special powers they have a cost and they uh, generate a resource so in, in order to be able to pay for the card um you have to use resources so basically all the cards in your hand you're either using them to play um or you're using them as resources to pay uh, for the cards uh, which sucks because sometimes you get like a really really good set of hands and then you're like oh my god I don't want to get rid of any of this like what do I really need to use more from the other because like I'm gonna have to get rid of these things to be able to use the resource set at the bottom. Moving on to the search for planet x this is a app based game um which again if you're not into app based games i know some people just are like no i don't, I don't want that in my life then this game is just not gonna be for you but if you don't have a problem with it then this could possibly be a game for you this is a game that the more and more i play the more and more i really enjoy like every time i play it i'm like wow why don't i play this game more like i really actually enjoy this game i've only played it um at one player and at four player and four player I played it once and all honestly this is a game that I've come to found found <laughs> honestly this is a game that I've come to find out that I prefer solo just because you don't really have a, um that much interaction with the other players because everybody is kind of just like you know doing trying to search around the board on your phone so again it is at base and then you have this sheet that you're crossing off uh, just so you can try to find Planet X. You know, the app will tell you what's in each um, sector, in each location. You're able to target, which you're targeting like one specific zone, or you're able to survey, which lets you survey, you know, like depending on where the, I think it's like the sun, uh, the, the way that this little like roundy belt thing kind of goes around, like lets you survey what's available to like the sky. Every time that you survey your target, it takes up time on like the, overall round thing <laughs> i'm like the worst at this you guys okay it doesn't get any better with the movies <laughs> well i guess a little bit better with the movies but the thing is like when you're playing with other people like i don't really feel like there's not much player interaction i guess the only thing that you can possibly beat somebody to is like when you're trying to like research or you're uh, trying to put in your theory like because you know obviously it's whoever puts their theory first um who will get that particular point that is if you have your theory that's correct you get certain points so of course if you're first you get more points versus if you're second that would be like the only thing that you know multiple player count that if you're wanting something to have more blocks otherwise the bot still does that and i really like the solo play with the bot because again it just well not again because i haven't told you guys uh you just click the little button on the app it tells you you know like confirms that the bot is like on space four and then it tells you what it's gonna do like survey or target or whatever what it's look i don't know it doesn't tell you what it's looking for i don't think it does no it does and then you just move the little bot and then that's it that's the end of it that is like my favorite type of solo experience when i'm doing these type of games like with an ai where it's a simple movement with the ai i really do not like it when you have to do so many things with an ai and it's just like oh my god like i i have to think about my turn i have to do this now i gotta focus on the ai and what they're trying to do and i don't like it like that i i really really enjoy just like a simple really quick turn 
Uh, I don't I don't need to be over here forever and a day with you. Like, just tell me what you want to do, and then we'll move you, and then we're done with you. Let me get back to my turn over here. But this was like a game that was part of like my 50 games one week challenge that I did last year, which I will be doing again this year because I think I can do it this year. I really do. But anywho, um, my cousins and my sister were like, yeah, that's probably the game that they've disliked out of my whole collection. Um, that it was good, but it's not their favorite. Oh, also I am mainly like a solo player. So all the games that I've mentioned previously, I've played all solo. If I play them um, with anybody, I'll let you guys know. One of my favorite um, games just generally of all time would be Cascadia. I've talked about this game so many times already. Uh, well, so many times. I've only done like three to four game videos, but I think I've talked about it in all the games that I've done, all the games and all the videos that I've, I've talked about it. But uh, it's a tiling game. You're trying to get the animals in the habitats that they want whether it's the bears wanting to be solo in a pair or in a trio or the fish in what kind of like distance long that they're trying to be in the elk what kind of formation they're trying to be in but it gets very very puzzly and i it's another one that's really good and feel good and it's a quick game that i like to play but moving on to lost ruins of anarch and this is another game that i absolutely adore oh also cascadia and lost ruins are part of my 10 by 10 challenge so there goes some extra like uh plays there and i just recently got the expedition leaders expansion and yeah, I, I, I get the hype on the uh, on it. And I'm not gonna lie, like the very first time that I played Lost Ruins, I played it at uh, BGG Con and I played it with the expedition leaders, which when I bought the game, I didn't realize that it was like separate. But basically here, you're just like, um, inv not investigators, like explorers. Um, you're Indiana Jones, you're Tomb Raider, you're out there trying to explore this like location here and you're digging up uh, things that you probably shouldn't be digging up because you don't know what you're about to uncover but there we are uncovering things bringing out something into the world um that's just kind of why i'm very extra when it comes to things like that like always like to put a little story a little some a little possess to it you're unleashing like these guardians that are protecting that particular area you're trying to defeat the guardians and then the guardians will then be on your side and like they'll give you a benefit plus they'll give you extra points it's a worker placement like deck building game it's beautiful it's another one that the solo ai super simple then we have two mini bones undertone and i don't have that many bones you guys this is literally the only two mini bones game that i have and honestly when i got it i didn't even realize that it, it was like a standalone game thank god that um it was a standalone game otherwise i've been screwed this is actually like the only game that i can think of that i actually like playing with two different characters um i'm not really somebody who likes to be handling multiple things multiple people um i like to handle myself and the ai that's it i really 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 don't like games where it's like oh you have to have at least three players so you would have to handle two and then plus whatever the ai is uh, it's one of the reasons why i don't play like zombicide by myself because on that one you have to play with all six characters dude imperium i really enjoy it but again if you play it solo it's like you have to have two characters plus the ai would be technically the third character so that's like one of the things that i really don't like it's with chip theory i think um i'm very new still with you know like the publishers and designers so I, i'm not gonna say those i really like the chip stuff um I know, although thematically, I don't really see how it goes with it. I don't know, but I enjoy it, I guess. You know, it, it's pretty cool. Um, and basically, you're just kind of uh, going through your little story. Um, each turn, you're reading something, and then you have two choices to make. Usually, one's good, one's bad. One's a little bit more beneficial than the other, or they're both really, really bad. I don't even know how to explain it. Oh, that's terrible. We're, we might just move on because there's a lot to this game. There really, really is. We're gonna move on, okay? I also played a Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. It's another one that's part of my 10 by 10 challenge. It's like baby version Terraforming Mars. Um, it's in the title, you're trying to terraform Mars. Um, you're just trying to build up, it's like a, I don't know, what is it called? A tableau builder, right? I think that's what it's called. Try to get all those damn discounts with the steel and the titanium because that helps you be able to, again, get discounts when you buy other things. It's another one that I really do prefer to play solo versus playing with somebody else because I've played this game solo and at two players. It's just another, a game kind of like the Search for Planet X that I just don't feel like the other player really does anything for me. Um, I mean, yes, it will help terraform Mars a little bit quicker for me, right? It's just like, ugh, like there's not that much player interaction, like what I would want it to. Then I played Rolling Realms, and I this is 
one of the very few that I did play at two players. It's a Strollmeyer game. Uh huh. I know that one as well. Like, he actually made this game during the pandemic and it was kind of like a print and play. But I guess where people were asking for it, they actually ended up printing it and they're selling it. Like, all these player cards that coincide with other Stonemeyer games. There's like nine rounds I think there is and each time you're playing with three different cards which we could have like viticulture and you're rolling this big chunky dice and basically you're able to use the numbers on two specific cards and then you get the resources that are in those um that they give you. You have to use um the dice on like on, on different cards you can't use them on the same card unless again you manipulate if you have certain like hearts or certain coin i can't remember which one it is that allows you to use it in the same um, in the same particular deal so then i got dungeon sites and danger which is from like alia i think that's what it is you're rolling four or five dice i think it's five because i think it's four white ones and a black one then there's like an inactive player and an active player and if you're the active player which is the whoever's rolling the dice you're able to use all five dice um, in a way of combining two so either you use the two the two pair of white or you can take in the black with one of the numbers over here but if you're the inactive player the only way that you can use the black dice which you still have access to it but then you have to kind of mark off the little black dice on your little sheet there uh, but basically you're just kind of going through the dungeon um, with like the numbers like depending on what you're rolling um, you have to start off like on the corners um, where the green section is like the starting of the entrance and then you're kind of working your way and you're trying to defeat um, all these monsters that are in there if you're the first person to defeat that particular monster you get I believe it's like three diamonds two to three diamonds and then everybody else can still get diamonds but you don't get the full like full full of them so basically if I were to be the first one to defeat this particular monster I would circle it and get less than three diamonds everybody else will then cross off the three on that particular monster so if they get there to the next round they could still get a diamond but again it would just be one versus the three if you're the first one so it always is beneficial to be the first to try to kill the particular monster now the treasures allow you to get like more live get this flame deal that i'm not 100 sure how to do it because i lost my instructions so i don't know really and then you're also able to get more of the black dice because the black dice are actually pretty handy now the thing uh, with playing solo though is that you literally have to hit a monster every single turn otherwise you have to mark off one of the lives so you can literally die so quickly i always die very quickly because I, of course at the beginning of it it's kind of hard to kind of get to that first monster like you have to get like that right amount of like the number <laughs> obviously to be able to get into it and be able to hit it so usually the first round first two rounds you're bound to lose two lives right off the bat and the thing is with the lives you have to at least by the time that you get to like the big main monster in the middle of the board you have to make sure that you have at least three life left because when you hit the monster like the main monster when you defeat it it takes three life away like you get i don't remember like five gems or whatever but it, it's like you get benefits from it plus it it's like it's not gonna go down easily it's gonna be like oh you're trying to kill me mm, mm, mm. let me like swing at you too so it's gonna like knock you around a little bit versus like the little smaller monsters those don't do anything for you because they're little weak things they're probably trying to run for their life but no big mama is like oh you trying to you come back to my friends, they want revenge now. Moving on to one of my favorite games from last year also, which is Three Sisters. It's like 25th century games. Oh my God, look at me, y'all. I was saying, I don't really know this. I've talked about this a lot. Farmer Edith, that heifer, I don't like her. But she's cool, like if you play with other people. But when you play it by yourself, that's when. And I did play it um, for the first time at two player. It's farming, they're harvesting, and you're trying to get points and like getting things from like the market we're, we're gonna move on uh dog lover uh this is a game that i actually got for christmas it was a stocking stuffer and i honestly didn't think i was gonna enjoy it as much as i as i did um uh, i've only played this well it's not a solo game this is not a solo game you need at least two players i think it's two to four or five i don't even know how, how many players i could play with that it's a simple simple game it's so cute you're trying to get thongs and you're trying to get, make tricks 
and uh, my coworker really, really loves it. She goes, that's a great present. So basically, you're gonna have like your trick card and that little trick card's gonna have like a certain pattern on it. Uh, your basic one is just like three little squares. And basically, you're gonna just kind of rotate that card however you're gonna want it. It also has like a little star, and that little star is kind of where you're gonna put this little watchdog. So basically, when it's the next person's turn, um, if they wanna get something from that particular um, row or column they can only take one card from that particular row or column again depending on where the watchdog is just trying to make sure also that all the uh, dogs are fed by the end of the game because if they're not fed that doesn't count it's another one that's really really quick so easy to like teach and learn and then we're moving on to parks and i think that's key master and i really really enjoy this game i played it first on bga and I'm like, okay, I, I, I get the hype and everything. I ended up buying it and I'm really, really enjoying it solo. Again, it's another one that I've only played solo as far as physically. It's just you against the ranger, but not really against the ranger because the ranger is just kind of trying to mind his own business and doing ranger things. But ultimately it is blocking that particular space that you're in. The ranger moves depending on where he's standing, where you're standing on the trail that's going on. Uh, once it gets kind of towards the end of, the the in, the intro uh, does take a park card from the top. Now the only difference is that when it does take one of the parts, it doesn't get refilled. Versus when I would uh, get a card, when I get it to the end, it automatically gets refilled. But when a ranger gets there, it doesn't get refilled. And then you move the ranger using the uh, gear cards on uh, the little suns that are on the top, which is one, two, or three. So you already know it's going to move one to three spaces. And if it happens to land on the spot that you're in, it's not going to stop there. It's just going to move forward um, to the next available one. Uh, because again, it doesn't want to bother you while you're on your journey through this beautiful, you know, nature scene. Each time that it's going through the trail, it's also collecting sun and water. And that's kind of like the main part to it because once that particular thing gets refilled, or well, not gets refilled, gets filled, something triggers and it's nothing usually good. So. It does kind of give it more of a mean factor to it when you're playing it solo versus when you're playing with other people. So if you're kind of looking for like a mean version of Parks, if you're looking for something, try it solo because there's just a tiny little bit, just a little bit. It's not like, oh my God, fall on me, like he's gonna come out. Like, no, it's just, it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. And then we have Under Falling Skies and my streak of knowing who it belongs to has come to an end here. Basically like uh, Space Invaders, uh, real-time space invaders so if you like that arcade game i think you're gonna enjoy this game it, it goes very quickly and you're basically just trying to shoot down the invaders of spaceships and uh you're rolling dice and you're putting your little section on the bottom where like little numbers <laughs> whatever the dice that you're using and depending on what number dice is how many uh, spaces down those particular spaceships are gonna be going down so it's very strategic because it's like I want to shoot things down but then I also need energy and then I also need what's the other thing it's energy uh, influence the green one I don't remember what that is research research right the green is what you're trying to do you're get, trying to get all the way to the top I almost make it y'all but I never I've never won this game it, each little square at the bottom kind of gives you a special action but again you have to kind of try to strategically maneuver the spaceships to certain parts mainly like to be able to kill them and explode with the fighting situations and sometimes you're like oh damn i'm not gonna be able to kill anybody this turn and it gets very sad then we have wingspan asia and i really love 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 the wingspan and this is another one that's part of my 10 by 10 challenge i just have wingspan just generally parks was another one also that was part of my 10 by 10 challenge i love that little like duet mode deal i think that's really really cool uh just like regular wingspan the automata automata automa right automa uh very simple to use i'm always in a game of wingspan on bga and uh, if you want to play with me, um, this is my little BGA handle deal so you can uh, friend me and then we can play Wingspan or any game. I'm always down to learn uh, new games um, on there. Then we have uh, Dungeons and Dragons, The Legend of Drizzt. Yes, I think that's how you say it. You're building out um, your dungeon. You don't have the full map. You're literally putting 
um, what's it called tiles depending on where you're going to go and explore and you're fighting monsters and they're coming and get you there's some damn little goblins i like to jump up and like attack you and chase you and you're like ah oh my god the spiders they attacked me it was just so funny because i had just got a card previously something about a spider and then we got like spider monsters like a new a new i've played this twice i, well, I played it back to back the same day because i kept dying <laughs> when i tell y'all I, I just said everything now <laughs> it was a spider that killed me right away y'all but we're gonna keep moving forward okay uh going on to hadrian's wall you're like in roman time or whatever and you're trying to build your walls and you're trying to not let these picks come and fight you while well, they're fighting you but like come through your wall each turn you have these cards you're flipping over it tells you all the resources that you're getting which is like warriors and servants and like civilians and like resources and i'm pretty sure i'm missing some stuff there and everything on the sheet it looks like it's a lot it's another one that can get kind of combo-y as well if you hit it just right. And then you got your own player card and you flip two cards and you get to decide which one you want to use as far as for in in uh end of the game scoring and then which one do you want to use for the resource and basically whichever one you're going to use for the end of the score rounding like it could be one like you need completed wall section. It's another one that I feel is going to be like to search for Planet X that's gonna be like the terraforming mars where i think i'm gonna prefer this game solo like i i really don't see how how somebody else is really gonna help me because i mean i again i know that i'm supposed to play with like another deck of cards and flip a card over and if i use that particular card like i have to do something over here i never use her cards i'm like i i get what i get for myself because i don't even want to deal with all that but I know that when you play with other game, other games, other people, my understanding is like you'll give resources or resource gets taken. I don't really know. And then the last game that I played in the month of January at two players, I just got it. It's actually my very first game that I backed on Kickstarter. That is Casting Shadows. Basically, you're just trying to get your opponent to zero health. Everybody's going to start off at 18 points and you're trying to like bring in bring them down you're just trying to do this by like attacking the other person with these spells that you get uh we all have our spell book which is just like on the side of your board and you're able to hold um five different spells plus you get a protective like companion kind of deal which is like an evil version and that would be the sixth card in your like spell book but again it's just like on the side of you then you get um kind of what are, what are they called uh, i forgot what they're called they're starting like spell like counter spells then you have your counter spells the counter spells are actually the only cards in your spell uh deck that are face down when you put them and then you reveal them at the time that you're trying to use it to counter spell whatever spells coming at you and then you discard it uh, back into the deck each towel does something different whether it's giving you a certain resource, giving you fragments, uh, letting you heal, letting you prevent certain damage coming your way, um, giving you, one of them gives you spells, well, gives you that counter spell. At the beginning of your turn, you're gonna roll these dice, which are like five dice, I believe, and you're gonna make up your resource pool, and this is what you're gonna use to be able to uh, buy some of the spells that are around, um, that are available by all the tiles. It was a simple game, but it was really, really cute. Uh, but yeah, these are the games that I play um physically and as far as on bga the first up is going to be welcome to that's one of the games that i'm actually always playing on bga obsession um i really really like this game and i'm just kind of trying to like master it a little bit better i do have the physical copy but there's a lot to it so it's just a little bit easier to play it on here but love the love the game i've actually won i think like my last two games um my shelfie um it's another one that i enjoy on bga i haven't quite got it like a lot a lot to be honest with you but it's another one that i think i'm gonna just stick to playing here on bga Lemming Forest is another one that I really, really love playing and I really, really want to add to the collection. Uh, Takaido, I love that game. It's a very chill game, but I think I prefer it on BG versus in like playing it. 
Uh, I do have the game, but I, I think I prefer it on VGA. Um, Seven Wonders of Architect, I really enjoyed this game as well. It's another one that I really like playing there. I don't think I would add that one to the collection. I do have Seven Wonders Duel, uh, but I, I definitely like this one way, way better. Wingspan, of course. Again, I'm always on the game of Wingspan. Uh, Splendor, Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride, you guys, it's so funny because I've played it physically maybe like two or three times, and I and that was like one of the first kind of games that I got and I just I didn't really get it I'm like everybody's always talking about to get to right to get to right and it wasn't until I started playing it on BGA that I'm like okay I'm like really like really liking this game so I don't know if it's just one that I just prefer on BGA or what I don't I don't know. And I play Seven Wonders Duel. Um, it's one of the, again, I do have this game. And I forget how much I really enjoy, to be honest with you. For Cell, um, I've played that game a couple times. I don't think, I haven't won for sure. I, I suck at games also, by the way, you guys. Just, if you're looking for like an easy win, definitely hit me up because you're more than likely always going to win. Because I, I love playing games, but I suck at them. I really, really do. Great Western Trail. Um, I don't know. I think I've given up on Great Western Trail. I, I, I was... I played it a couple times and I played it like in person like at a con once and it was it was fine but I don't know I just I I'm, I'm thinking that it's just not a game for me um Azul love that game also if I'm able, able to get on a game of that I will can't stop it's actually a really good game that I just started playing and I think that is that's it those are the games that i played on bga you guys so this is what my january um was looking like uh february is looking pretty pretty sad <laughs> i don't think i really played that many games as far as my 10 by 10 challenge uh is going this is it right here uh the progress there's still a couple games i still haven't even got to i think i might try to play sagrada tonight to be honest with you let me know down below what did you guys play did we play any of the same things uh again let me know like how do you guys prefer these type of videos like just kind of like what i did with bga where i'm just kind of like tell even though i said i wasn't gonna get into it it was like more like personal stuff versus what the game's actually about um or do you guys like that kind of you know description of the game of course before you guys click out of this video if you haven't already don't forget to give it a like subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time i post something new uh, once again i am mainly a movie related channel but i am trying to kind of put a little bit more game board and uh content out this year um, but yeah that's it for me today until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye